by FanDuel Sportsbook, Kevin Durant. Getting ready to go. Spent three years playing with James Harden in Oklahoma City. Those two will be reunited for the first time since 2012 tonight. And are they in the starting lineup together? Oh, you bet they are. The starters, Durant and Harden, joined by Joe Harris, DeAndre Jordan, and Jeff Green, as Michael Grady just told us. Kyrie Irving still not back. Could be back Monday, depending on how he ramps back up to basketball activities. But... Richard, what do you think about this Nets starting five and the way it looks tonight with Harden and Durant both in there? Uh, honestly, that looks like a lot of firepower to me. I'm actually really, really excited. You know, everybody's worried about fit. Well, the only way to make things fit is to spend time working on it, getting to know each other, playing uh, in in a new system. Obviously, there's familiar, uh, familiarity when you have Dan Tony uh, on, on this staff yes. and Steve Nash. The it's Yankees very familiar. So there's a lot of relationships. Network. Everyone's worried about the fit. But James Harden had his best, best years with Dan Tony. Steve Nash obviously won an MVP with him as a coach uh, also. So to have him on the sideline next to Steve Nash is, is huge. And I think it's going to be really, really big and really, really key as how quickly this group can really start to blend. Now, the Nets officially introduced James Harden yesterday, but it was actually just a little while ago when the deal became officially official with a little tweak. Became a four-team trade. There's a little hiccup reportedly with Karis LeVert's physical, and so the Pacers ended up getting an additional second-round pick as well as some cash to complete this deal officially in time for James Harden to play tonight for the Brooklyn Nets. The man who orchestrated it all for Brooklyn and has brought them Durant, Irving, and Hart. Sean Mark sat down one-on-one -on -one with our Michael Gray. All right, Sean, first things first. Is it now championship the or bust The jersey is hanging. The um, kicks are you know, ready. Great question. The Brooklyn uh, we're, we're gonna own it. is We're going to own the fact that you know, we've James built this team Harden. to go as far ready as we possibly go. can. You know, we want to be the last Barclay team standing Center. there. That's Reunited the line, you know? with Kevin uh, Durant. The my guess time. is there's five, six, seven, eight teams that all have those same realistic expectations as well. And um, you know, we're obviously trying to continue to build this, build this roster, build this organization up to have sustainable success. So, you know, that's certainly the goal. Take us back. Do you remember when you had your very first conversation with the Rockets about James Harden? You know. I, we're always checking in, you know, um, you know, my role and, and, you know, our front office's role is to always get the temperature of the league. So we're, we're constantly checking in with a variety of different teams. You know, I think on the James Harden front, you know, um, we might've had a conversation maybe two or three weeks ago, um, really was nothing to it. And I think this is where it really sped up over the last sort of 48 hours, you know, prior to the trade when, um, you know, conversations were happening, you know, very frequently with conversations that you're having with, you know, personnel, players, also what you were seeing out there on the floor, why did you feel the timing was right now to make this move? You know, it, they're difficult decisions, and I'm not going to shy away from it. When you, when you have to move um, the players that we did, and, and a huge thank you to, to, to Jared and Karis and Torian and Rody for all that they've done, you know, for their time with the Nets, and they will be sorely missed without a doubt. So you have to weigh, you know, everything that those guys brought, the fiber that they were a part of and the fingerprints of this organization that they've all put all over here. Um, and then also then you're saying, well, we have the opportunity here to, to add a, a franchise level talent in, in James Harden who wants to be here, who wants to be part of this, who already has a pre-existing, you know, relationship you know, with one of our star players. So, you know, it's um, – those are things just, to be quite frank, you know, we couldn't shy away from. And, and um, you know, again, they they met our organizational goals of, of where we want to be, you know, over the next few years. Sean, you came to Brooklyn without any draft picks to work with and built the franchise to where it is right now. How much trepidation was there on giving away so many picks in this deal? You know, yeah, absolutely. We we certainly think about that. You know, we're, again, we're we're weighing, you know, the cost of doing business. Uh, at the end, at the end of the day, I, I think I have utmost faith in in our scouting department, our front office, who has has shown in the past, you know, 
um, the resilience and fortitude to, to go out and, and find players, to develop players and so forth. And, and we're going to have to do this again. And regardless of whether we had made this trade or not, you know, that's always the, the goals of this organization is to, is to go out there and find players that fit with, with your timeline and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish and then help, help develop them and stuff. So it's, it's an incredible opportunity that we have again ahead of us. Um, you know, it's not as if we don't have the picks. When we first came in here, um, there just flat out weren't any. Whereas, um, you know, now we have them, just, you know, they're, they're tied up and swaps and so forth. But there's a variety of different ways we can continue to build this and continue to put out, you know, uh, you know hopefully something that's sustainable for a long time. James has said he wants to win. His breakup with the Rockets was publicized and even criticized. In your conversations with James, you know, how confident do you feel in immediate buy-in and his fit with the other superstars and the players on this roster? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the conversation I had with, uh, with James yesterday a couple times um, revolved around him wanting to win, him wanting to be part of something. Um, all he cares about was winning. And I, and I don't want to speak for him. I'll, I'll let him... Let, let him address this uh, in his own time when he does his media. But, you know, that stood out to me. You know, he wasn't coming in here looking for something other than, you know, I've done everything else. I just want to win. I just want to win. And, you know, having that pre-existing relationship with Kevin it, it certainly helps. Those guys know each other. They can talk freely amongst each other, hold each other accountable, and, and continue to help them push this team in the right direction. I'm curious for you, when all parties finally agreed upon the deal, the Rockets say yes, you say yes, what was your immediate feeling? Um, you know, I can't wait to see it on the court. I think that's, that's <laughs> what, it, you know, when you see something on paper and, you, and you've, you've um, imagined, you've, you've dreamed, you've thought, you've sort of prognosticated on what it might look like or, or, or what if we didn't do this, what if we did do this, you know, I, I can't wait to see the group on the court and watch them continue to build, continue to grow, um, you know, communicate and, and just see where, where that group, um, you know, of, of 17 guys, I mean, we're going to have 17 guys here by the end of this, where they can take this franchise to. And I know these guys will eventually speak for themselves, but Coach Nash Kevin, other players on the roster, what were you able to pull from them in terms of their reaction and where this franchise is moving now with James? Yeah, guys are thrilled, you know, to be quite frank. I think this even solidifies more of what our expectations are, you know, and, and what the goals are, what the organization's goals here. You know, there, there should be no shying away from the fact that um, we're going for it. And, and to be quite frank, that starts with, uh, with Joe Sai, who has – be nothing but supportive in every form and fashion of how we're trying to build this. Um, and, and, you know, that's great to see his conviction to winning, his conviction to doing something, you know, that's, you know, never been done in Brooklyn before. So, you know, I, I know he's excited about, you know, getting fans back in this building and Barclays and so forth and so are we. And to be quite frank, you know, the borough deserves it, you know. Sean, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Michael. Well, Sean Marks, we've heard.